Gentlemen, don't tell him what to do. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> Chris yeah, Kelly. Turn audio and shit on. Hey, what's good? up, guys? How are you, sir? Good Appreciate you stopping by. Yeah. Doing okay. How are you guys doing? We are excellent. Now you're in a lot of bands, dude. That is that is a hilarious sound effect. <laughs> we have a, oh, we have yeah, about 170 have buttons and graphics at any time we can push. So you'll hear a bunch of them during this. But uh, how are you today, sir? Appreciate Thanks, you doing this. Uh, Doing okay. How are you guys doing? We're doing oh, big vibes. We're doing big good vibes. So, uh, so you're in. This is Huxley, or just Huxley, and Illustrium, and life is good. And then somehow, you get a phone call. I think from Spencer Charnis. What What is that all about? And how How did you join Einstein? So it's uh, it's a little bit different than that. I used to be in a band called Galactic Empire, where I dressed like Darth Vader and played Star Wars music. I would um, watch that. I toured uh, I toured with that band for a number of years, um, and then uh, I left uh, to be in a different gig, a much bigger gig, which uh, I will not say the name of. But if you Google Chris Kelly guitar player, you will figure it out. Um, I was just in a mask while I was there. So just to be respectful of uh, the people I worked for, uh, I don't advertise the name. But so I was already touring professionally for a number of years. And actually, like, I want to say two years, two years ago. No, three years ago. I think it was sometime in 2019, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Ricky actually hit me up to do an ice nine tour, which I believe was right when JD left the band. Um, but I had other commitments, uh, that I wasn't able to move. So, um, I believe that's when they got, uh, Dan. So, uh, Ricky and I have been friends forever. The very first tour that I ever did was filling in on guitar for his band. This is the apocalypse back in mm -hmm. like 20, mm -hmm. 14 or 2015 so ricky and i have been really good friends for a really long time so uh when uh when you know the pandemic was in its throes and we were all really uncertain about things and you know i didn't really have an update on the gig that i had had at the top of 2020 um and sometime in the like summer of 2021 um I woke up to an article about the band that I was playing for, uh, basically saying that there was going to be a hiatus, uh, which was news to everybody. Damn. Um, so, uh, so I texted Ricky and was like, well, looks like I'm looking for, uh, for a job. And a couple weeks later he was like, Hey, so I've got some news. Um, we need somebody. So, uh, that's, that's how that happened. Uh, I didn't, uh, speak to or talk to Spencer until I met him at rehearsals um so yeah it wasn't uh it wasn't as glamorous as uh as people might think of you know i'm just like this local guy minding my own business and suddenly spencer calls me you know like uh it wasn't really it wasn't really like that uh, you know that's that's typically not how things work these days so yeah just just kind of being friends with the right people at the right times is, is really the answer here but um it's been killer so far you know the we did two legs of the hip to be scared tour last year and uh especially the second leg which is the one we did with bad omens that one sold out at nearly every show awesome. um and uh attendance attendance was insane at some of those shows and we got to play a lot of big festivals and um oh there's my alarm to talk to you guys um <laughs> make sure you're on time damn it yeah there we go um and uh yeah just uh, a really good group of dudes um in the band and uh a lot of awesome guys and gals in the in the crew um everyone gets along really well tour moves real smoothly i really don't have anything to complain about that's awesome what is your what is your favorite song in the set to play of theirs uh in i'll t I'll, I'll just talk in terms of the last tour because i don't want to give anything away for the upcoming ones um 
probably i mean off the off the new record either horrorwood or shower scene is probably going to be my favorite um horrorwood because it's a killer opener and i really like playing the solo in that one and shower scene uh because i actually do a lot of uh a lot of vocals in the chorus uh helping spencer out which is really fun um this is the first first professional gig i've had where my singing has been utilized so that's been fun nice. um but uh yeah i like i said i don't want to give away anything of of what's to come but yeah that would, those would probably be my my top two and i saw that you guys are going to be opening for metallica soon which is absolutely freaking incredible who and it's i believe it's you're the direct openers right underneath before them is that correct for that one for that no one? no it's 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 us, it's us, and then Greta Van Fleet, and then Metallica. I sh should be vice versa, I'm just saying. But anyway. Get your facts straight. <laughs> but, uh, dude, that's well, gotta be... The, uh, the, uh, I've seen, I've seen a few, I've seen a few comments from the, from the metal people saying, oh, Ice Nine should have been... The fact of the matter is, Greta pulls more money than Ice Nine does. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I don't pretend to know all of the nitty-gritty details about the, the Ice Nine business, because that's Spencer's area of things. Uh, I know the band does do very well. Um, that being said, uh, Greta has fucking exploded over the last few years. Yeah, they're um, big. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, they're damn near an arena band already uh, by themselves. So um, when when tours and festivals and things are booked like that, it's it's about who pulls more heads on any given day. And that's how things are. You know, it's not really about uh, not really about who fits the image more or anything like that and i think also i mean metallica is just one of those bands that they're big enough that they they just bring out whoever they want to be on the show so yeah that's pretty damn cool let's play some uh illustrium real quick is there a particular track that you would prefer we play uh if you want one that really gets into it scroll down there's a song called deliverance for the damned that one starts right off let's do it hanging out with chris kelly let's go Deliverance for the Dan. That's pretty damn brutal, I would say for sure. Uh, I feel like almost all of your projects are fairly different from each other. Is there is there ever been like a genre that you haven't got to to do something with that you're just kind of waiting on the right opportunity? Uh, I mean, my background has always been uh, you know hard rock and metal, so uh, I. I mean, there are plenty of genres that I haven't done, but uh, and not ne not necessarily to say that I would be completely closed off to the idea of doing them. But like, I haven't done. Uh... Oh, don't watch that one. Don't watch that one. Go back. Go okay, back. okay, Go okay. Back. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe dirty ugly. Uh, where is it? No, that, all these all these were shot before I was in the band. Uh, Here, I'll click videos and is go. Hate and... me not in there. Where is that? Okay. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, yeah. okay. I'll hold my question. No, you can go. What you got, Lloyd? Um, so, I mean, like, Ice Nine is a pretty influential band, and it's definitely, like, kind of changed the game a lot. When did you feel like your guitar work was, like, when did you feel you were making it big? Was it, like, when you joined them, or, like, was it before that? When did you start to feel like this is no longer the average band, like, lifestyle anymore? I'm taking it to the next level. When did it feel yeah, like I a mean, job? That, that yeah, that, that would have been Galactic Empire for sure. I mean, I was I was playing, um, you know, what was essentially glorified cover music because it was just it was uh, like one to one to the John Williams orchestra uh, parts for the songs, uh, like from the actual themes in the movies and stuff um, just done all on guitars and, you know, drums put to it and things like that. Um, and that band, uh, we put out our first video just like as a joke back in 2015 and it went viral. And that's kind of how the band uh, started touring and took off. So I had I had done like two or three world tours with Galactic um, and that was my main gig for a good while. So that was that was definitely the moment, you know, that was, you know, first time touring in a bus and first time playing in an arena, yeah. and, you know, things like that. That was that was when all that stuff started to happen. So that that was definitely the. What's your the, cutest fan or, memory? <laughs> cutest fan memory? Yeah, what's something that a fan did that just sticks out to you, like to this day? Like, what's like something that just really like, damn, bro, that was nice or something? Well, I, you know, it's funny. Like, I, I mean, the the Ice Nine fans, like, there are a lot of people who like bring things to the shows. Um, like, I came back from the last tour with like 
keychains and personalized mugs and like some of them will bring us food that they know we like and oh hell yeah um things like that's so, like that's that's all do you that's eat it really in sweet. those scenarios um, do you actually eat the food or is that kind of like well not you in, don't know not in front not in front of them but yeah like we'll still we'll store it on the bus and you know just kind of kind of pick at it uh but uh the the thing is I feel it might just be because I'm a more naturally negative person, but I, I, rem I have an easier time remembering like the crazy, like some like weird shit that a fan said or, or, uh, uh, you know, some, some, like if there was a fight outside of a venue, which two, both of those, both of those things happened on the last tour. Yo, say, have you beaten anybody's ass at a show? Anyone <laughs> disrespect you and you had to lay no, out? No, 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 no. We uh... didn't. No, we don't get it. We don't get involved in that shit. And it, we played a show in Hartford on the last leg of the tour last year, and uh, um, and there was some kid that was causing trouble in in the crowd. And, and I guess from what I understand, he ended up uh, assaulting one of the security guards, and then like oh, the no, entire no, no. security team. Let like let them have it. Yeah, they have um, a whole crew. Don't mess but, with the security guys. Dang. Yeah. Um. And then I mean, it, you know, we did a lot of meet and greet, uh, or you know, like distanced, uh, like VIP stuff uh, during the last tour. And I think I think the weirdest uh, moment was when a fan uh, asked if any of us had a kidney for her, because I guess she needed one. Fair question to and ask, it, I guess. Wow. Your shot. Yeah, yeah. And again, the, the girl, the girl after her asked if asked if we were selling the the hip to be scared ponchos, like the you know the clear plastic ponchos online. And Spencer was like, "Well, we're selling them here." And she's like, "I don't have the money." And I was like, "The chick next to you just asked for a fucking kidney. Like, <laughs> have some money isn't isn't a hard ask anymore. Like the bar's been set." Yeah, right. <laughs> the bar's been set. Hell yeah. <laughs> So it must be cool playing shows with Huxley because I imagine the the crowd's a little smaller, more intimate. So you get the the best of both worlds where you can kind of touch the crowd, and then there's fifty thousand. You get to do a little bit of everything. Uh, is that a safe assessment? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously anyone who tours professionally grew up kind of eating shit in the in the local band circuit. Um, so you know, luckily Huxley isn't that uh, that green, but. Um, yeah, I've I've actually only done two shows uh, with them since I've been in the band. I started I started as their producer uh, back in like 2018, um, and uh, this song that you have queued up here uh, was sort of my introduction to being a member of the band because I just I thought that the project had legs and I thought that I had a couple of contacts that could kind of help develop it and I wanted to have a bit more of a managerial role. Um, uh, than I did at the time, uh, and you know now that now that my touring career has uh, kicked up a couple of notches, perhaps uh, perhaps logistically that was a mistake, but I'm still enjoying it. Um, but yeah, the, you know the the shows that Huxley plays are definitely smaller, but it's it's still a still a good time, and you know I do my best um, to make sure that you know the rig is uh, more to the standard of what I've become accustomed to of having, you know, everyone on in ears and having a click track and, you know, things like that. So that, you know, it's tighter than, you know, the average band that you might see out at a bar or something like that. And because I'm away so much, we have to be more selective about the shows that we play. So that inherently kind of gives us um, an advantage strictly in terms of being able to enjoy the shows that we play as we only pick, we only take the ones that we think are worth it, you know? Gotcha. Let's check out Hate Me. I mean, we're all, everybody in the band, I'm, I'm the only one that, that tours professionally, but everybody in the band grew up being a metal kid and doing the, the, the grimy grind uh, for, for, you know, a decade plus. So uh, Huxley is the, Huxley is the, uh, what, what my friends joke is the Red State Rock Band. It's the, you know, just make, make, make some shit that could potentially be a hit, you know. So, I got you. Uh, <laughs> Where's your Where's your glasses? How come you're not wearing your glasses? That's not me. That's not even him. Oh, I thought, oh, I <laughs> That's not him either. <laughs> oh, God. I'm the one with the sparkly guitar. <laughs> no, my bad. Sorry, I looked really quick. You guys, you guys both have you know shiny heads. I, I got confused. Yeah, we got we got three bald guys in the band. It's uh, <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> We're going to do uh, one fan question, and then if you're down, Chris, uh, let's review some bands together, some local bands, and maybe even do a trivia question or two, if that's okay. Fan sure. question is, 
Were you a part of the Silver Stream? And if so, what was it like working with Bill Mosley? No, uh, I I haven't been in any any music videos, streams, albums, anything. Right? As it stands right now, I'm just a live guy. Um, whether or not that will change in the future remains to be seen. But no, I, I, I have not been a part of any of the streaming or videos or anything like that. Gotcha. Isn't that kind of how it started off for Ricky too? And then he eventually kind of got like permanent membership? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, you know, every everybody, uh, you know, as far you know, like obviously there's there's the 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 public members of the band, but you know, Spencer's the boss. It's his it's his show. You know, Dang, so. right? Gotcha. Uh, so this is uh this is Samora. That one, not that's not too bad. Got a pretty catchy hook to it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think. Uh, just listening from a producer standpoint, I mean, obviously I can't really hear the mix very well over, over streaming quality, but um, my, my one note would be find a, a, a relatively noteworthy producer and see if he can do a co-write on the next track. Cause I think I the like top line, the, the, the top line is, is the only area that I feel was a little bit lacking. Like I think, I think all the, I think all the music sounded sounded really cool, like had kind of like a Breaking Ben sort of vibe. Um, I think it could just benefit from, uh, you know, kind of an objective ear, you know, helping write the the hook and um, just trying to, you know, kind of bring it up to to another level. But um, structure structure wise and, you know, it was generally catchy, like solid, solid band. When you guys are on the oh, bus yeah. doing uh doing long, long, long trips, which I imagine is pretty often, what do you guys binge watch? I'm gonna base my trivia around what what you binge watch when you're on on the tour bus to see if we can stump you. I think that I think that varies for everybody. Um, you know, when we when we binge watch anything, it's not really as a group. Uh, we're usually uh, usually just watching on our phones and, or our laptops in our bunks. Um, but uh, uh, I know that uh, me, uh, Chevy, who's our uh, our wardrobe and makeup person, and uh, uh, Corbin, who was our LD on the last tour, and Rob, who's our, our merch. Um, uh, I want to say it's a. I don't. I want to say. I want to say a merch manager. Merch manager. That's the word. I don't want to just say merch guy. Uh, he does a lot. He does. He works hard. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the four, the four of us uh, have our own have our own text thread called the Disney Kids. So when we have days nice. off, we, we we go into a hotel room and watch some Disney movies and drink and have a good time. Cool, I could I like that a lot. Give me a second to pull up a Disney question real quick. Uh, we'll play another one. Let's do <laughs> Defile the Crown. Let's see if I can stump you. Defile the Crown, unknown entity. I already know what kind of band this is gonna be. Oh yeah, you can tell right away. File the crown. All right, Chris, here's your trivia question. Mel Gibson once voiced a cartoon character for Disney, and he played the role of John. I can't say the last name because it'll give it away, but what movie was he? Was Mel Gibson a cartoon character by the name of John? I don't, I don't think you realize that even if, even if I didn't know the answer, you already gave it away. There are very few Johns in the Disney universe. It's John Smith, Pocahontas. Damn it. That is correct. Well done. That's my boy. Show no mercy. Hell yeah, well done. I do want to end on one more uh, Illustrium track. If we could play one more, what would you prefer that we play? Uh, let me think here. Hmm. This whole, that, that last record was a concept record, so there's a lot of... There's a lot of like buildy shit. Uh, let me think. Um, uh, the plea. Turn on the plea. That should. You got it. Be a bit of a change. Jesus, that was brutal. That was brutal. I like that one a lot. The <laughs> plea. I have one more last question. You who got it. Your, in any t in any movie, TV show, or cartoon, who's your favorite shit talker of all time? <laughs> Uh, that would either have to be 
Joe Pesci, I just good fellow. Speak collectively, either either the cast of It's Always Sunny or the cast of Letter Kenny. It's one of the two. Oh, good choices. Very good. I think I for like me, that's a good question for you. I don't think this is the answer you're looking for, but I think I would go Joe Pesci and Goodfellas. He's got some crazy shit talking going on in that one, but uh. Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty, and then Ari Ari Gold from Entourage. Oh, Ari was good too. I have never I have never seen Goodfellas, and I've never watched Entourage. So Rick and Morty. Well, there's some. Though. What? Hey, that's all that matters. Unbelievable! You gotta see Goodfellas over anything for sure. Yeah, I would say Goodfellas over the other one, but Goodfellas is a need in life, I think. I'll send you. I'll send you yeah, a streaming. There's a lot. There's a lot of. Uh, I'll send you like a streaming link or something that you could watch it on your laptop. Movies but. that I haven't. This is a busy man. He's got a bunch of bands. He's professional. You don't got time for fucking movies right now, all right? Maybe later. <laughs> I've also I've also got two kids. I haven't wa- I haven't played oh, a and video he's super game or dad mode. Like no worries. Yeah. Chris, this this was a lot of fun, man. We appreciate you taking some time out of your day to do this. Uh, 2022 should be an absolutely fantastic year for yourself with all the projects you got you have going on. Have fun opening for Metallica. For me personally, I feel like that would be one of the the highs of my music career i don't do music but i'm just saying if i did i imagine that would be one of the highs but uh man this was awesome thank you so much for doing this we appreciate it yeah thanks for having me guys it was fun ladies and gentlemen chris kelly always always give your balls a tug (laughs) of huxley (laughs) illustrium (laughs) and ice i killed baby thank you sir